Well, Koss, what are you putting together for us today? Uh, this is our three-axis gyroscope. Mm -hmm. So we looked at one gyroscope, which is a bicycle wheel. That's a classic example. Uh, this is going to be a similar experiment, just uh, different, given that we have it on uh, fixed axis. So we're, we're taking what Dan just did, and we're expanding it a little bit further because we're able to do it um, and rotating it in a lot of different directions here. This, this device almost looks dangerous. Um, it can be. I mean, I got to keep it away from my screen. I don't want it to right, swing around. Right, exactly. And, that thing swing around and, uh, and knock your computer and down. Hit, so. um, and I see that we've got a lot of different sensors on here yeah, measuring computer. a lot of different things. I can see it. Uh, yeah, so um, I have three sensors actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, traditionally, we've shown this setup with uh, rotary motion sensors. But today, we have something a little bit new where we're actually using a wireless smart gate. Um, and with that, I'm able to, with the 3D printed uh, mount, I'm able to determine or at least measure how fast the disc is rotating. So that's something new that we have today. Oh, taking uh, an experiment a little bit further. Taking it well. one step further, something that we had to um, sort of just observe before, now we can actually measure. And, and if somebody wanted to print that out, they, they can find the, the print instructions for that? The 3D files should be available, um, if not right now, shortly after this. Yeah, they're available right now, uh, pasco.com slash DIY? I would go to Thingiverse. Uh, go to Thingiverse. You'll find it on Thingiverse. Uh, we have a lot of different designs there, and that's where you'll find this, too. Excellent. Well, Akasa, I'll let you get your demonstration. All right. Thank you. So um, before I connect any of the sensors, um, I want to just go over a couple concepts. Actually, I need one more part. So Dan Burns explained how a gyroscope worked. Um, and those same concepts apply to this gyroscope, even though it's not a bicycle wheel, it's, but it's a similar type of thing where we have a rotating wheel that has a mass, it has a, a uh, momentum on it, and, um, and that rotation is going to cause the gyroscope to move in a certain way. Now, what's different here is that if you look at it, if I let this go, my gyroscope, it's, it's not falling forward, you know, like the bicycle wheel on the string. And that's because I have these counterweights. So what that allows me, what these counterweights do is now, it's not the weight of the wheel that's pulling it forward, right? It's, you know, what's going to cause it to drop? Well, a known mass that I can weigh, that's what is going to cause the wheel to fall forward. So um, now if you look at the equations for, uh, you know, measuring the torque and, and uh, different constants of a gyroscope, you're going to see that, one of the things we need to look at is the radius, which is the length from the center to the mass and the weight of the mass. So in this case, we have, we know the weight of the mass. Um, and the same concept applies where if we, you know, apply or if we rotate this disc, then uh, depending on the direction of the rotation, the gyroscope is going to move in, in one of the directions. So let's do this. I'll rotate this by hand uh, right now. And if I let this go. Well, it's, it's not it's not doing much. I mean, it's rotating, but you know what happened to the you know the spinning thing like the bicycle wheel? Well, this is where we can prove that we need to if we add a weight, it starts the precession. And if I rotate the disc the other way, oh, same thing does nothing. If I add the weight, it starts going the other way. So, because we're Pasco and because we are, you know, a measurement company, we, we have wireless sensors that do measurements. Um, we can actually use our, rot our rotary motion sensors to determine, well, first of all, we have a rotary motion sensor that can determine the angle of uh, the gyroscope up here. We have one at the bottom that can determine the, the rotation, ang the rotary, rotational angle. And we have the, uh, again, the rotary motion sensor here and that is determining how fast the disc is turning just like I explained before. So first I'm going to show you just with the two measurements of the two angles um, show you what the nutations look like and that's what you know the when you apply this weight how the two angles are correlated with the the bobbing of the gyroscope and the rotational. So let me go ahead and connect my sensors. All right. 
you have my screen up on the screen? Yeah. Okay. All right, so I have my sensors connected. I'm going to, I want a graph, but I don't want a graph of angle versus time. I want to just see the relationship between the two angles. So I'm going to create one more graph and just change the axis. So let's do this versus, so the angle at the top versus the angle at the bottom. And if I press start, let me spin the disk again. And watch what happens if I actually, uh, I'm going to spin it one more time a little bit faster. If I apply, so we see that it wants to move that way. What if I just kind of tap it in the wrong direction? Let's, let's try that again with the string so I can uh, actually get this thing going really good. All right. This way it gives you a lot of power over, oops. Okay, stop, start. Now if I just tap it in the opposite direction, it wants to, there we go. Now we see these loops happening because I pushed it in the direction it doesn't want to go, so it's trying to counteract that by, you know, having that reverse movement. And again, with the, I can, you know, now that I can, I can measure that along with observe it. And of course, if we add this, the other sensor here, we can um, get the speed of the disk as well. You know, look at our gyro disk, uh, the gyroscopic equations, and then we can uh, determine, you know, prove all of the effects that we need to prove. Um, anyway, so there's this, just a simple demonstration on how our gyroscope works. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out is uh, one of the benefits of using this is that one of the concepts that we see is that, you know, the rotary motion or the gyroscope disc is turning. Now, the rotation is what keeps it balanced. What if I stop the rotation? Right away, it drops. So it's not the spinning of the disc itself. It's also the precession that keeps it turning. And by stopping the precession, the disc falls. Not falls, rotates to the rotates ground. Rotates to the ground, right. right. So. An awesome demonstration, Wakas. Very nicely done. And Wakas, the, you know, what, what you're demonstrating here, of course, I, I know you're showing it very simply, but for those of our folks out there that uh, talk a lot about astronomy, um, you mentioned precession. Uh, we talk about the Earth on its axis, Earth, undergoing precession. The but Earth then, does a similar thing, right. Right, and then you also mentioned nutation, which is also explaining the, the way that the poles um, move in their motion right, right. Uh, due to the spinning of the earth on its axis. So both of which you're, you're demonstrating here, a nice little thing right here on your desktop, but, but really a great way to explain what happens with the earth and its rotation and being able to measure some of those things with it, yeah? Right, yeah. Yeah, very nicely done, thank you, thank awesome. You. <laughs>